from Salem and as we've promised we're going to be finishing the eyes. Eyes, eyes, eyes. Your eyeballs started to get heavy. Ew. Ew. From the oh it's getting sticky. Yeah. Mm. Well, okay. Do you want to paint my eyeball or can paint your eyeball or do you want to paint? I'll paint my eyeball. Okay. So then we'll switch. So yeah. this is Masha's model. talk a little bit about our, our trip and experience with Salem and also experience with different energies, energies of women and Halloween. Yeah, yeah it was really magical. Um, we were driving and on this highway and just listening to music and then it was like right when the drop hit for those music or something like the moon just revealed herself yeah it's just so big too so big so big like yellowish almost orange orange in yeah. the beginning and yeah coming from boston which i've never been to boston before so it was like such a beautiful experience for me and um yeah it really was such a beautiful awakening we were like whoa because that was like a really profound moment for me you know like yeah i remember you were talking because i was like i've never assigned significance to, to the, moon. the moon in the same way that i did that day where yeah. i was like we dedicated like a day to this relationship it was so beautiful I yes was, like, it was so i mean seeing it before seeing it during it brought up a lot of reflection for me of just being like, when was the first full moon? Where was I at at the beginning of the month? And then like, mm. where am I at now at the end of the month? And like, just like being like, wow, like so much has happened in between this portal of time. Yeah, it's real interesting to measure time with lunar cycles. And uh, Alima, um, our friend, where we were staying, she was uh, she was from Sri Lanka, and she was telling how they the celebration of the moon is so ingrained in their culture, and they do these different rituals with milk and bathing in milk, mm -hmm. and uh, they make uh, special food just for that time. They they really really prepare for for witnessing and celebrating different aspects and different phases of the moon and I just thought how cool um, how cool it is that there are cultures in the world that do that and back in a couple hundred years ago um, I a lot of cultures were much more in tune uh, with um, movements of the moon like when I was researching um the structure of the app and i started to look at these really cool calendars they're called vulvella um and i kind of lovingly call them oh they called volvella but i called them, call them vulvella. <laughs> vulvella yeah uh they're called volvellas and they are uh lunar and solar calendars um and it's like the wall calendar but in a circular format and then you move um, you move the uh, pointer based on where where you add so it's like really really interesting kind of like a sundial but also for for the moon and some of their structures are pretty complex and pretty sophisticated yeah. so it's like super cool to see how um, We've had a lot of uh, cultures paying very close attention to movements of the stars and movements yeah. of the planets and uh, movements of the moon. Yeah, yeah, Alima 
she was talking so much about like how when she got her period uh, and she told her mom or someone in the village, or she, I think it was her mom, um, and then like saying how like then they like take you in and then like bathe you and like you're not supposed to see guys and stuff like that. For seven days. For seven days and it's this whole thing and, um, and then also talking about further along in the conversation we're talking about like um, people being married by their like astrological alignment, alignment yeah. and stuff like that and it's, it's just so interesting with this whole project of just like the more people that we get involved in it but other from like different cultures that are around mm -hmm. they are drawing upon their own wisdom that's been passed down to them or their own traditions or their own intrigue into the astrological to even measure time because yeah. we all measure time in different ways and I ask myself so often like uh, how like because how people invented the time units mm -hmm. um, and in my research I also found that the days that we have are given after the deities and given after um, I um, stars too, because you have Sunday, like if you think of it, Sunday after the sun, mm -hmm. then Monday after the moon, and then I know Friday is Venus, and then Thursday is the Jupiter, and Saturday is the Saturn, and then Tuesday and Wednesday are kind of it's a little iffy for me. One is Mercury and one is Mars, but I just um, do not remember. That's good. But how cool is that? Yeah. Like, that there's like this, uh, the cool. days that we use that are named after different planets. And then there's things planetary hours too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, someone came up with that. Someone created that. Like, I just yeah. imagine this person or these people sitting out there and like looking at stars and looking at the sky and then inventing this new ways of how to relate to time yeah. and just being inspired being inspired and i think it is important to like to be able to relate to time through ways that feel magical and through ways that feel inspirational and through ways that feel like portals mm -hmm. into the mystery because when you look at the clock and you're like oh it's eight p.m. on Monday or it's 2 p.m. on Saturday it's one way of relating to time but then looking at the moon and seeing how she moves into space in the space and remembering oh this was the first time that I um, that I related to moon in this way or that this was the time when I met this person or this was the time when I um, put some intention into the motion and then seeing how it's moving like i'm not saying that not have clocks or anything like that i'm not saying that this structure is like bad but i'm saying like just i have so much curiosity of what are these structures like what type of structures can we create in yeah. our lives yeah i mean like it's like when like a big celebrity dies or something like that and it's like where were you when this per you know like I remember where I was when Michael Jackson died. I remember, like, people remember where they were with 9-11. Like, yeah. you know, these, these symbols that we have that um, get us to reflect in a different way than being like, where was I last Sunday? Where was I last Tuesday? Where was I two weeks ago? And like, we kind of blur things because 
um, these names don't really have imagery to them. Yeah, or emotional significance yeah. to them. And I think that's kind of the power of art in general, mm -hmm. because yeah. here's this visual material that you project on, you know, yeah. just project upon and, and really, yeah, just yeah, form a relationship too. That when it, it's like a touch, like people have like these things called touchstones, you know, you keep, mm -hmm. and I, you know, like memorabilia around, like old records or whatever it is, like not for the sake of always playing them, always using them, but just for the sake of um, them existing. They trigger you in some way and evoke it, something within you. Yeah. And it also to me is the, um, like what is the frequency, what is the energy mm -hmm. of that um, motion or of that imagery? Mm -hmm. What does it evoke? Because like even the gesture of like looking, looking at the clock, like it kind of feels like a little brisk and brief and like and snappy. Like mm -hmm. it feels like snappy about where do I need to be, what do I need to be doing, where I need to go, you know? Like, and then also, <laughs> and but looking at the sky, like looking at the stars, it just feels to me it feels so peaceful and it feels so expansive. Like yeah. this feels very contractive. Like this feels very much of like I need to like gather myself. Like I need to like gather myself and boom, yeah. like and have a direction and go somewhere and like but this feels like looking out and being like embraced and feeling spaciousness feeling like time is not this directional linear way that i need to like gather myself into this one line and project into a direction or future i guess but like it feels more boom 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 like immersive yeah. like i'm in it and this what this is one of our really big intentions for Luna Arena is for people to be able to um, to connect to that sense of expansiveness and to connect to time in a way that feels very immersive and feels very spacious and feels very free and yeah. very very free and not like I need to go somewhere, I need to do something, I need, I need not enough time in the day, which we all get into, like I get into this a lot, I probably get into this more than into it, I think so, I don't know, I kind of like into this side, and into like the time, like let's check the time. It's no, I mean, <laughs> I definitely feel it, like I feel the, um, the power my phone has. Yeah. You know, just, I mean, like, I don't Saint have- Saint Siri. Yeah, Saint Siri, Saint yeah. Siri. It's so, like, I'm not looking at a watch all the time, but like, you know, every time I click my phone, I mean, like, that energy is dialed into that and anxiety naturally prevails. Yeah. So it's like, versus I look up in the sky and I mean, just am filled by the atmosphere and, and that idea of like we're relational beings mm -hmm. it's like yeah. you look up at the sky and everything around you gets smaller yeah and that's a trick to i think to like make yourself feel more one with the universe literally <laughs> because we are and i think we should remind ourselves that all the time that we're operating on these planetary universal gravitational light movements and the more that we pay attention to that, the more we can connect to others in a more unifying way of just understanding the absorption, understanding mm -hmm. the architecture of, of our realities and that we do have an architecture in general that has been created for us. Yeah. I mean, it, I think these the constructs of time are beneficial because it's like, it's like the same reason why having money is beneficial. Yeah. We all have a common way of communicating this mm -hmm. abstract matter of transaction communication. Yeah. Um, 
But is it limiting? Of course. And it's the form of it. Yeah. It's so material. where's the balance? Really? Yeah, where's the balance? Where's the balance between this directional energy of time, this the linear time, and this expansive awareness? Awareness. <sighs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Which is like, and then in Salem, to go back to Salem and talk about that, like, I mean, it's amazing how it's kind of stuck in time in some way, because yeah. it's kind of Halloween all the time. Oh my god, it's like a Halloween town. So, yeah, so to like go in there during the blue, blue moon, which is also this whole thing of transition, you, you know, a portal, like the portals are opening, and then to be in almost a parallel universe of Halloween of Halloween it's Halloween, it's Halloween every day and it's Halloween every day I mean it's so cool so cool so cool yeah so cool. so cool yeah I had before coming in there I had a conversation with my friend and she was feeling very um how to say this she was feeling concerned about being in Salem on Halloween because how um, intense the energies could be and just like the whole appropriation of the um, suffering of a lot of women yeah. and turning that into a tourist attraction. Yeah. And I think it's there. Like I definitely, definitely. I definitely think that it's there and to... I mean like there's an attraction to take a picture in front of a judge's house that was know. part of condemning witches. I mean, that's pretty crazy. That's really crazy. That's and like you don't crazy. know this, like you're, like you don't know that that's what's happening until you walk up to the placard and it's like, oh, and then you read why it. are we, why are we doing this? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know this. Why is this here where it says like the wit? Was that where it said the witch it's house? It says the witch house, yeah. and I thought it was like the witch house, like the house where witches live, but it wasn't the house where witches live. It's yeah. the house where uh, innocent women has been condoned and burned to death as yeah. witches, and so acknowledging the this this history and acknowledging that mass collective trauma that occurred um, on the feminine aspect of our psyche and the one that deals with intuition and mysticism and magic yeah. and spaciousness and uh, looking up into the sky yeah. and seeing magic yeah. in everything. So that definitely happened. Um, but also I do think that it's really good to acknowledge that reclaiming and that claiming yeah. the power of, of the body of the body and claiming the power of our voice too and our traditions and i think this was one of this huge motivations for me personally to go to salem because i felt um like this is just such a special place and it has a very dark uh, and twisted path, past, but it also attracts a lot of people that want to come in touch with that darkness to find uh, to find empowerment in uh, reclaiming your reclaiming your power, reclaiming your power as a woman, reclaiming your power as a magical being. Yeah. And it's really, really exciting for me to just be there and feel mostly a really wonderful and sweet and gentle and powerful energy. Like, kind of like there are threads underneath it that's been very traumatic, but it all got woven into this exquisite tapestry um, of energy that feels feels good and we were able to like um make fun of ourselves and make fun of that and make fun of love so much and love a lot so much and have a spirit of mm, lightness yeah. um and i think it is just so important to have a spirit on, of lightness in face of 
um, some very deep trauma. Yeah. And then I would say the devil. The devil. Like this yeah. idea of the mm -hmm. devil, like being in, uh, or to use like the same language that like when we were visiting the museum and like this archet, you know, communicating archetypes right now, right? It's like what was in, in the context of before what they knew, like the mm. witches and whatnot, it's like the witches were like part of the devil, like part mm. of the devil's work and whatnot, mm. of the body, of pleasure and all these things and indulgence and I mean, indulgence. but mainly, I, I mean, even when I was reading, I mean, I feel like maybe the history is defined a little bit more there in certain aspects. Um, I feel like the, the particular place we went to, like, could have illuminated a little bit more on the women and, and men who were tried uh, about it but yeah like just this idea of like getting in touch with this darkness what is this darkness what is, what is this darkness why is it dark what yeah. is the issue with, it's what, dark. with what darkness what is the issue with dark I mean, <laughs> I mean like our most beautiful moments come from pain mm -hmm. and come from processing trauma and and yeah, processing ourselves. I mean, I don't know, like, and and darkness is subjective. I mean, what could be, you could, one person can see probably a lot better than another person in the dark. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another thing thinking about. And, yeah, that's interesting. And yeah, like, you know, if we were abstracting that more, um, but yeah, you know, it, I, don't, I don't think that I think that we can kind of look at these archetypes that have been communicated to us and instead of being so fearful of them, we can mm -hmm. use them yeah. to communicate the past, communicate the past, communicate the present, communicate the future, like identify, identify, abstract, interrogate, love, mm -hmm. and bring out the light yes. in us. Bring out that vital awareness yeah. into into the darkness, like the darkness of possibilities. Yeah. Like. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> do you feel us like our our art just like this is how it goes? It's like. Let us know how you experience time. Um, time is objective, but subjective at the same time. At, at the same time. At the same time. Time is my time. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Let us know. Um, Let us know. The eyes. The eyes. The eyes. Oh, this is <laughs> juicy. Mm. <laughs> juicy eyes. such a good time and I would love to go back I mean there's Masha do you want to show your, uh, your little perfume oh yeah so we always think about you guys <laughs> we're always on the look for good products always so we found us um Rose of Babylon Rose of Babylon by Aroma Sanctum And these perfumes are absolutely exquisite. They um, are essential oils, and they're oil-based instead of uh, instead of uh, cologne, like uh, alcohol-based. Most of the perfumes you get in the store are alcohol-based, and alcohol evaporates much faster than oil, so uh, you have to use a lot of fixatives to fix the smell in. Uh, we're, unlike oils, which is like a traditional way of making uh, perfume, and oil-based perfume has been around for like thousands and thousands of years, and so it was really amazing for me to find people that practice the art of uh, of perfume. This one is really beautiful. It has um, vanilla. And it's like kind of has like musky smell. I think it has frankincense, frankincense in it, mm -hmm. and oud. 
I will double check. I like one with my smell. Um, but so good. It's like a universe. It's like a universe. Their, their smells are amazing. And we are uh, talking with them about carrying the line uh, for Lunarina on mm. our website. So I'm super excited to like start introducing you. And we also got another friend in there too. I want to show you. Mo actually is drinking it. Mm. It's hot chocolate. We went to this amazing chocolate store and they had Mesoamerican inspired chocolate and then like European inspired chocolate. So this one. Is this is one's French lavender. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, the chocolate grounds are representative of the historic drinking chocolate the French court of Versailles between 1670s and late 1700s. French introduced lavender and cloves as the flavoring in drinkable chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really, really delicious, mm -hmm. very tasty. It mm, it's, does not look like a powder. It's uh, a sipping chocolate, which has a little different. It's just tasty. I think you guys. I hope you guys don't gross out by me just reaching. But I'm gonna like drink it myself. So. <laughs> 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 it kind of has like this little granules in here of chocolate and a tubular sugar and spices and then you make it in a drink which is really really exciting and uh, I'm gonna be talking to them about um, Lunarina inspired chocolate mm. too yeah. so stay tuned and again if you have um, if you have some interesting handcrafted products that you think we will like um, Reach out. Well, reach out and put them down below in the comments to like post your uh, post the products that you that you're working on your handcrafted beautiful things and then also let us know if you are interested in uh, oils uh, or chocolate drinking chocolate mm -hmm. and let us know which flavors mm -hmm. are your favorite so we can um, we can try to make it happen yeah for you. We really do like to work with our audience and with our viewers. Mm -hmm. Like we think you are like our little family to us. We're building. We're, We're building. building. The foundation is strong and the branches are sprouting. So um, yeah, I am always open for private yoga lessons if that's something that um, you want to get into and you want to explore intimate right now so the time and space is available yeah. so um, and Masha is a certified hypnotherapist and tantra healer so she can do all sorts of work and <laughs> virtual work on you as well and we're here to heal and strive for a more compassionate world yes heart to heart heart to heart loom to loom we're not